All right. Um, I think we can begin. So first of all, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Rob Perilio, the communications lead of Ochre and representing Trust IT in the consortium. Uh, this is our second webinar uh, where we've tried to introduce Ochre to our community. And even with this as the second webinar, we're very happy to see the huge interest for the Ochre project. This webinar, which will be held regularly, roughly every month, aims to engage with our key stakeholders. So for everyone's information, we will have other upcoming webinars in the future. And uh, the next webinar will be announced uh, at a later date. So do watch our website and our social channels. Uh, for your information, our website is www.ochre-project.eu. We will also have an Ochre Suppliers meeting in Utrecht on March 12th in the Netherlands. So for more information on that, um, you please visit our website and our social channels. You'll find the information there. Uh, additionally, attendees are encouraged to tweet during the webinar. The official hashtag is hashtag OchreWebinar, one word. As for the structure of this webinar, we will start with a presentation from our speakers today, which is estimated for about 20 to 30 minutes, followed by an open discussion. Please keep questions at the end of the presentation, as you may find your answers in the following slides. Um, now I'm going to introduce our speakers today. First, we have Andres, the project director of Ochre and representing Jayant in the, in the consortium, which interconnects Europe's national research and education networks to reach thousands of research and education institutions, enabling Ochre to offer service providers a direct delivery route. Um, also, we have Antonio, representing the RIA group, coordinating the activities uh, related to the Earth observation of the project, uh, specifically for gathering the requirements. And it will also provide a technical platform to manage and attract the cloud update. After this webinar, we will be sending out the slides and a one-minute survey, which is uh, part of our requirements gathering activities. And it is vital for the success of our product. So we do hope that um, you all take some time to fill the questionnaire. And now I pass the floor to Andres. Um, Rob, thank you for the introduction. Hello, everybody. And thanks for joining uh, this webinar. Much appreciated that you take the time to attend this session where we have the opportunity to, uh, to update you on what the Open Clouds for Research Environment project is, is about. The Open Clouds for Research Environment, also known as uh, OCRE or OCRE or OCRE, uh, we respond to, uh, to all those names. Uh, we are a group, a consortium consisting of Jayant, CERN, the RIA group and uh, Trust IT uh, collaborating in, in, this, uh, in this effort. The aim of today's webinar is to tell you, the research community and, and suppliers about the Ochre plans. Uh, what is Ochre about? What are our aims? What is the approach? What is the timeline? What are the benefits for you? And how can we prepare and get involved? And with uh, we, I mean us all, because your input uh, in Ochre is very much needed. Also good to mention this project is at the starting point. Rob already said we would love to enter into a discussion today with you. There will be more opportunities to get your input and feedback for this, uh, for this uh, project. And we do expect that some of the components uh, are subject to change, can, can change throughout the project, can be improved where, where, where needed. So in a nutshell, what is Ochre about? Uh, Ochre aims to stimulate the adoption of digital online services, commercial services, commercial cloud offerings and earth observation services, EO services, to stimulate the adoption of those services by the European research community. And this is done, this project is a part of the European Open Science Cloud. Ochre will organize a tender in 2019, and this tender will result in, in framework agreements with selected suppliers, and then the offerings from those suppliers can be used by research institutions who can, who can buy the services. In addition, uh, Ochre has 9.5 million euros available uh, funding from the European Commission to stimulate adoption 
in the research community of those cloud and earth observation services. And in this presentation today, Antonio and I will show you the details of those plans. So this is kind of an agenda of the items we want to talk to you about today. Why, why do we do this? Why have open clouds for research environments now? We do this because we see that clouds and earth observation services offer the research community a wealth of, of powerful tools and services. However, the community still struggles to incorporate those services in, in their work. It's difficult for them to find and select suitable offerings and establishing the agreements with, with, with suppliers, apologies, suppliers, providers is, is difficult. Uh, there is uh, legal and there are technical aspects, there are contracts to put in a place. And if every institute in Europe has to do this individually, well, that takes, that takes a lot of time. So we want to do this in a efficient uh, manner. On the other side of the spectrum, in the uh, supply side, we see that also for service providers, it's quite difficult to reach the research community and, and to meet the needs in those technical, financial and legal areas. Hence, OCR, we want to be the bridge between those two worlds. We want to make it easy for the research community to adopt cloud and earth observation services in a safe and secure and an easy manner for them to incorporate these services into their daily activities. So to help with service discovery and service acquisition. And we wanna make it easy for the service providers to, to deliver through ready to use contracts and meeting legal, financial and technical requirements. So we are the linking pin, the bridge between those two worlds. The project runs for three years. We have just started January 2019 and the project will run until the end of December 2021. And we thus bring together the cloud providers, the earth observation companies and the European research community. And as I mentioned, there will be a tender. This tender will result in ready to use agreements that we are able to bring to 10,000 institutions and there is this cloud delivery program with 9.5 million euro in adoption funding. There will also be a management platform that we will develop and put in place that will allow us to track uptake and to manage vouchers. More about this later on in this, uh, in this presentation. So this kind of sets uh, the scene for what Okra is about and, and what we will be doing. Also a bit of context. Uh, Okra is a part of the European Open Science Cloud efforts. Many of you know that Europe is the largest producer of research data, scientific data in the world, and the European Commission wants to increase the usage of this data, the big data uh, avalanche that is coming our way, and to uh, connect research infrastructures together and to, uh, to strengthen the capabilities. So the European Open Science Cloud is there to improve our capabilities in that area using big data. Cloud services is all a part of this. OCR is one of the projects that contributes to that whole European Open Science Cloud ecosystem. So there are many more projects and entities involved and we all play our part. A bit about the scope, to zoom in on, on, on the scope of uh, the Open Clouds for Research Environment project, we are targeting specific services. I already mentioned cloud services. With this, we mean infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service, from, from commercial companies, so commercial cloud offerings. And the second track that we zoom in on are Earth Observation Commercial Services, which leverage and run on the EIA, uh, EU uh, DS platforms, the uh, Data Information Access Service platforms, where the data from the Copernicus Sentinels is uh, stored. So these two tracks, service types, cloud, infrastructure, platform, software as a service, and earth observation services that run on top of the EU DS platforms are targeted in scope for Ogre. With this, I wanna hand over to my colleague Antonio, who will tell you a bit more about the EO side. Thank you, Andres. 
So, as first requirement, as Andres already highlighted, is that these services, um, the EO service needs to run on DS, but let's zoom in and we try to understand a bit more which kind of services we are talking about. Uh, as the, um, the EO services are quite variegated, and in this slide you can see some examples of it. So, we are talking about value added products that are um, derived from the processing of um, images and other data acquired from satellites. For instance, we can have a map. Or we can have tools that hide the visualization and the analysis of uh, satellite data and other data, uh, derived data from satellites. All these are valid examples of EOS services. And of course, um, also data processing services in which there are algorithms already available in a, in a processing environment that can be uh, used by researcher on specific data to um, generate new value added uh, information that then can be used in their research. Um, these services in some cases may also need, in order to run on DS, um, some processing platforms or what we put in gray that may be an enabler for this service to move efficiently uh, in, on DS. For what concerns uh, the community that, uh, that will be targeted from, for these services, of course, it's the research community, but our aim is to not only uh, get in touch with people that are used to work with satellite data and derive information from satellite data, but also with new community for which there is a potential uh, in the use of satellite data and there are been new in this sector. And for instance, we are talking about the insurance sector uh, in this case, while in the agricultural sector um, is a more consolidated practice to, to use the right information from satellite data. Thank you, Andres. We can go on the next slide. So, uh, why participate to the uh, OCRE call for uh, a service provider and an EU service provider in, in the specific? Uh, on the DIAS, uh, you will find all Copernicus data that, of course, will be uh, a good way to scale out your service to a global scale and easily, because on DIAS there is also cloud computing capability. Of course, it will um, be an incentive also to follow the market trends uh, in which more and more the EO services are entering new business and generating new value. So now it's research, but of course, uh, that there is a new business, but of course, uh, also being uh, on, on DS will open also other markets that are not strictly research, even if our purpose in the Ukraine is the research. And then, of course, uh, there is also a potential market growth uh, because uh, in the, the, the scaling factor on the DS and the new challenges that the EO derived information can offer to, 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 the, to the new challenges. Thank you. Let go next slide. Uh, as Andres said, uh, I mean things we are saying are a subject to to to, to be uh, to, to change because we are also trying to get the requirements from users and input from all the stakeholders. Um, and this is an important um, important factor for for our work. Uh, we are going to get the requirements from the users and specifically um, researchers uh, and institutes in order to get in this uh, procurement that we are going to run um, the services that they need. So more or less try to ensure uh, the consumption of what we are going to, to procure. Uh, of course, we are want to have an open dialogue with suppliers uh, to be sure that uh, we are aligned on what we procure and what you can offer. And to do that, we are going to organize webinars, as like this one, or meetings like the uh, face-to-face -face that was mentioned before. And let's zoom in a bit on the uh, requirement gathering, uh, specifically uh, for research community and suppliers. Uh, but there will be dedicated webinars for this requirement gathering. So this one is more informative, but uh, there will be the webinars in which there will be more chance to, to, to dialogue and collect requirements. Uh, of course, we are going to participate to specific conferences uh, to advertise uh, OCRE and also to collect 
require first set of requirements from, in, from the researchers and people that are going there. Uh, for instance, we'll be present to the AGU. Uh, we'll be also present to the uh, Earth Observation Symposium on the Living Planet, the Earth Cell Symposium, um, also to the ISDE, the Digital Heart uh, Symposium. And of course, uh, we'll also um, use a lot to help or ask uh, and, the, and interact a lot with the Earth community, as Earth is also part of our consortium. And with that, I think I handle back the ball to you, Andres. Thanks, Antonio. Let's zoom in a bit on, on the benefits of Ochre for, for researchers. Why, why should you be a part and participate in this tender? Well, first of all, this is the opportunity for the research community to give input in one tender and have suppliers meet our needs, meet the needs of the research community. So this is a procurement focused on your needs, the needs of the research community, where we aggregate skills, demands, requirements into one delivery vehicle. So you can give input to what the tender will ask from commercial suppliers. Also, these tender outcomes will be ready to use for you. Uh, we will have ready to use agreements. These will be public procurement compliant. There will be no need for you to run your own tender. If your institution is incorporated in the tender, is a eligible institution to consume, then you get ready to use agreements and you can benefit from all the uh, conditions of use that this tender will secure. You have to ensure then that you are included right in the tender publication so you can contact your NREN or you can form a buyer group with a number of research organizations getting together uh, either way through an NREN or a buyer group you can become a part of this tender and make sure that you are listed in the tender publication that you are indeed an eligible institution to be able to use those uh, contracts there is also an opportunity to uh, benefit from adoption funding. I have a couple of slides that talk a bit more about this. This is relevant for researchers and uh, suppliers alike because it's a great uh, opportunity. The EC has donated, has funded Ochre with 9.5 million euros for adoption to stimulate the usage of those infrastructure platform software as a service offerings and these earth observation services the money is divided equally so 4.75 million euros is in each pot 50 percent 50 50 and we will make this available in a number of batches in different adoption waves the first adoption wave is a small scale wave for us to get the ball rolling 500,000 euros 500k 500,000 euros, half a million will be made available from July 2019 onwards. That is what we expect in our current timeline. And that will be made available to researchers, to individual users. We will invite them to use offerings that are in place today in the Géant infrastructure framework. Géant ran a tender for infrastructure as a service solutions in 2019 that resulted in contracts with a number of suppliers and the resources offered by those suppliers are made available to those researchers. We will hand out vouchers to those researchers for them to use these offerings. Uh, OCR will not be the organization that will distribute those or that will award uh, to researchers based on scientific merit. We want to be a distribution vehicle, so we will collaborate with specific entities that are in touch with research communities that can uh, bring those researchers to us, that can fulfill that part of uh, the work. Good example, and the first organization to join us is uh, Eurodoc, the European Council for Doctoral Candidates and Junior Researchers. And they will bring uh, young researchers, hopefully very cloud savvy that want to use the clouds, which we think is a excellent starting point for Ochre to get awareness, to get more awareness about Ochre. We hope these users will become ambassadors and that we have good use cases from that first usage. 
that will raise awareness for ochre as a whole, also for the upcoming tender, both on the demand and the supply side. So in terms of awareness raising, this is important to us. It's also an opportunity for us to experiment with the vouchers to get more experience in this area. Then we will run the tender, more information about the tender procedure later on in my presentation. That tender will run the second half of 2019 and the vast majority of those adoption funds, 9 million euros will be made available after the ochre tender is ready to be used at suppliers who have been awarded a framework agreement in the ochre tender. So from Q1 2020 until the end of 2021, we will run those 9 million euro in adoption funds. We will keep the voucher mechanism and we will look at other adoption funds mechanisms as well. In that big round with the 9 million euro, we will target individual users, but also institutions and buyer groups. So a multi-tier approach. We like the voucher model because it allows us to separate two parts of the delivery chain, to separate uh, the payments for cloud resources, where Ochre is kind of the custodian for the adoption funds, and we will buy the cloud resources from the providers. So Jayant will fulfill this role. So that's the payment part. And then the usage using these cloud resources, the second part is done by the researcher. So we split those two uh, the, those two parts the payments and the usage are split this creates a situation where these resources are free at the point of the user because somebody else has, has paid for it this will also stimulate the long tail of science individual researchers maybe in niche markets also to uh, start using cloud services hence this gives a boost to stimulating the usage of commercial clouds by the research community. We will explore more usage models through the tender. Um, the vouchers are in this slide, but we also would like to see suppliers that can give different payment models, on-demand pay-as-you-go model, reserved instances and spot instances, preemptible type of models is what we will be looking for. Also in the tender, we will be seeking basic discount levels available to all the institutions that get together in this tender vehicle. And we will assemble buyer groups in the tender and we will describe those buyer groups in the tender publication. These buyer groups will commit to certain volume purchases and we would like to see suppliers give volume discounts for this. And then there is a test suite that we will apply to uh, test the technical capabilities of the suppliers after the contracts have been awarded to test their technical capabilities in a range of areas. The Ochre project builds on two already available components. Partners in Ochre ran projects in this area prior to uh, Ochre, RIA, Trust IT, and, uh, and CERN were collaborating in the Helix Nebula project. And Jayant has a cloud framework that it has put in place over the past years. And in both projects, there is experience and there are capabilities in, in running uh, tenders on a pan-European scale. So uh, these two groups are getting together in Ochre. This is the next step for us. So good to mention that Ochre is the successor to the HNSI Cloud and the Jayant infrastructure tenders. This is the next tender that we will be doing together, the next step. I already mentioned a couple of times that we can deliver at scale. I mentioned 10,000 institutions. How are we able to do this? How are we able to reach 10,000 institutions? This is a three-step approach, three steps. Jayant is the partner in uh, Ochre. Jayant is an association of 40 national research and education networks, dedicated internet providers serving the needs of the research education community in terms of IT, 
in the countries in Europe. So every country in Europe has such an NREN. These 40 NRENs own Giant, and each of the 40 NRENs serve a dedicated member group of institutions in research and education in their respective countries. So through that three-step approach, Giant and NREN's institutions, we have through one tender a reach to 10,000 institutions. That's pretty efficient. There is more. We will bring together, I already mentioned this, buyer groups. We will aggregate demand amongst research entities. And this is where CERN comes into play. Uh, CERN will form those buyer groups in the research community. Is already doing so in the IRO forum, where you will see on the right hand of the screen a whole range of large research entities, a collective uh, collaborating in the IRO forum. Uh, we are discussing OCHR with them. So there will be groups of research institutes getting together, committing to a certain volume level and committing to buy through one lead buyer. So also you see efficiency there, buyer groups acting through one lead buyer. This can also be done by the NRENs who will coordinate the national deployments. They can also buy in bulk or form that aggregation role on a, a national level. And individual institutions can, of course, buy as well. So besides the 9.5 million euro in adoption funding, we expect thousands of institutions will be able to use the contract by themselves and buy from the suppliers using their own money, all through one tender vehicle. Let's look at some of the expected tender requirements. As Antonio and I said, uh, we need your input. Community input is very important to specify those tender requirements in more detail. Everything that we have showed you in terms of how much adoption funding is available, what is the division between the two tracks, Earth observation and a clouds, infrastructure, software platform, that is fixed. That is something that we know is how uh, OCHR will run this. Also, this slide, we expect there will be tender requirements in these main areas and for suppliers i think many uh, many of those will be familiar to you of course you have to be compliant with eu data protection law which includes gdpr the outcome of the tender will be ready to use contracts that match the payment and purchasing models that are relevant for education and research our end users don't have their own credit card so we need purchase order based billing post paid billing accommodating capital expenditure etc through upfront commitments. So we need payment and purchasing models that work for our community and they will be described in those contracts. We want the suppliers to connect to the Géant network that allows us to reduce the costs for network traffic because Géant will handle the network. We want you to connect to the community's identity management federated single sign-on capabilities. We will be looking at your certifications in a range of areas to see how you are able to support our community that you have boots on the ground across europe can you do workshops etc license management are you able to offer a way for existing licenses to be migrated into this new model data portability is also important how do you get out of a cloud how do you export data do you support open standards to do so uh, are you interoperable and suppliers will be required to report usage of course within the limits of the gdpr report resource usage to ochre for us to track uptake so you can expect these tender requirements to be in place details have to be decided throughout the project this is the slide that talks about this uh, we will get input from the research community as Rob and Antonio said, we will be doing more webinars, face-to-face -face meetings to get this uh, input in place. We will get input from our colleagues in the European Science Cloud projects, uh, colleagues from EOS Hub, WP12, for example, will give us more specific requirements input. We will work with the Research Data Alliance. We will incorporate the FAIR data principles. ARC2 will give us input on the identity management requirements. We will work with the Open EO and the ESA EO exploitation platforms. And I already had a slide about this. We can build on lessons learned in the Giant and H and SciCloud previous tenders. 
the tender will result in framework agreements and we want to have a portfolio in place so this will not be a winner takes all evidently with a range of service types targeted and a vast community of thousands of institutions we want to put a portfolio of services in place with all suppliers who can meet those requirements Jayant will sign a framework agreement with each of those suppliers that are selected through the tender and these framework agreements will be valid for four years then all the entities that are identified in the tender, all these institutions in research, but in education as well, 10,000 will be able to buy those resources made available in these framework agreements through ready to use call off agreements. And in some cases we expect institutions will have some additional requirements of their own and they can do a mini competition to select the suppliers of their choice amongst those in the framework. This is a procedure similar to how the Géant infrastructure framework works today. So I hope that if you are a supplier and listening to this webinar that, that, that you see that there are great benefits for you, that this is a very efficient uh, route to market. You respond to one tender and then you can reach 10,000 institutions. That is a very uh, efficient way of uh, working at scale. The suppliers selected in the tender will become an integral part of the European Open Science Cloud. So that is also a big, big win for you. The European Open Science Cloud is developing a service catalog. First version is live and will evolve for time to come. It's kind of a yellow pages to show compliant services to the community services selected in the ogre tender will be added to the EOSC service catalog. We will connect those suppliers to the JAM data network and the community's identity management single sign-on system. So you will be embedded, you will become, uh, well, you get a place into the heart of the European uh, research community, one can say. And ogre will stimulate awareness and adoption of those, of those services. So it's attractive to respond to the tender. You will get a place the core of the European Open Science Cloud. A bit about this delivery structure, I think it's good to emphasize that I hope everybody sees that we are aggregating the needs and the demands of thousands of institutions into, into one delivery vehicle. It's a very efficient delivery vehicle. It's, uh, well, looking at this slide, it's uh, one, one boat. It has many containers on there, but it's, it, it is one, one a boat delivering this. It's a very efficient way of uh, doing this. So that is how the demand side, how the research and education community are getting institutions, NRENs, buyer groups, all getting together in this uh, ochre delivery vehicle. And we will be seeking suppliers through the tender that can do the same, that can meet the community's needs, but can also operate in a, a similar fashion where distributors, resellers would get behind their original uh, provider into one delivery vehicle as well. We operate as one as Ochre, and we will be seeking suppliers that can operate as one as well. This slide, uh, Antonio will tell you a bit more about, about usage management. Over to you, Antonio. Thank you. So as um, Andres said before, uh, we decouple uh, the, the payment and the consumption of services uh, via the mechanism of vouchers. Um, but we need to track these vouchers and uh, to do that, uh, we'll put in place um, what we call the technical business platform uh, in which uh, the, 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 the vouchers that are going to be used will be registered and which will collect the, uh, the usage of the services both uh, via these vouchers. Um, the interaction will be the lightest as possible, uh, just to uh, enable us to uh, get enough information to do uh, this tracking. And of course, the consumption of the service itself will be um, directly done by users on the service provider premises. Um, we will build our uh, technical uh, business platform uh, using the experience we gained in the HN um, Science Cloud 
and uh, it will be done by our company uh, Six Square, this part of the React group. I think that's that's all for now. Thanks, Antonio. That gets me into the the last slides of the present slide. session. Oh. Oh. Antonio, can you please mute? Please mute. I have some feedback on the line. Thanks. This is better. Thank you. Let's look at the uh, timeline where the components come come together. In Q1, Q2 of this year, we will be gathering input from providers and requirements and input from the research community and the webinar that we do today is is part of this as rob said there will be many more events coming um, where we will be gathering those requirements in q2 q3 of 2019 we will be forming the buyer groups the nrens the research community uh, we'll put those buyer groups in place and we also will publish a draft version of the tender. We find it important to be transparent and as soon as we can, and we expect this will be in July, we want to have a draft version ready for suppliers to look at, for everybody to look at. I think it's important for suppliers to prepare. This allows you to prepare in time and we will also be welcoming your feedback about this document. The aim is when we launch the tender October 1st, early October, October 1st, that, that document, if you work with us in the webinars and the preparation sessions, that, that document will have no surprises for you. So July, a draft version will be made available. Also July, Q3, Q4, we will have the first batch of vouchers, that 500,000 euros for infrastructure as a service offerings in the Géant cloud framework, we will be making those available and start with that first batch. I mentioned it before, the launch of the tender, October 1st, we will publish the uh, OGU notice, the official publication in the official journal of the European Union, and then the tender will be live. We want to complete these tenders in the first quarter of 2020. To have the tender completed, framework agreements that result of the tender with the suppliers we awarded to, to get those framework agreements signed through the technical service validation through the test suite to validate that you are technically capable, put the identity management and network connections in place and start the service usage. Also, the second batch, the 9 million euro vouchers will then go live and will run 2020, 2021. Besides the adoption funds, individual institutions and the buyer groups can sign agreements themselves and buy with their own money from the suppliers that have been selected in the tender. And with this, we have the complete story and picture of where we are with Ochre, what we want to do. Uh, Ochre aims to be a, a core component in the European Open Science Cloud. I hope you are just as enthusiastic about the opportunities as we are to run this at scale and to make commercial cloud services available in an easy and safe manner to the uh, research and education community. Next steps for us, well, we have 20 minutes left in this call. Happy to take your questions, of course. We will send the slides afterwards. There will be a short questionnaire attached to get your input, uh, also to give you the opportunity to ask more questions to us, to give input about the next steps. And good to mention um, in, well, less than two weeks time, even March 12th, we have a seminar for suppliers in Utrecht, the Netherlands, a face-to-face -face opportunity we will talk about what Ochre is, but we will also have a discussion session uh, to get more input from suppliers. So please join us if you want to talk to us in more detail. I want to thank everybody. I think it was a great conversation and thank you for your for your time uh, to attend. It's appreciated and I hope uh, you, can, uh, you, you will stay involved uh, with the, the next steps. Looking forward to this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you everybody. Bye everyone. Thanks. See you again.